Hi guys, I hope you guys enjoy this season two marathon of eating your feed. Make sure to come back on Saturday, November 16th for season three premiere. Okay, so here we are, season two, eating your feed. Season two. Season two, I'm Andrew. I'm Nikki, and this is Patrick. So today, our dear, dear friends Adam and Annie challenge us to make mochi. mochi. Based on a viral video we found on YouTube. Do -do 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 -do. So this video comes from a channel called Only in Japan. This guy, John Dobb, makes it. This is a street food shop in Japan. They've got two guys Whoa, they're swinging, those swinging, swinging mallets. My into gosh. like a bowl looking thing. So this is the process of taking rice to mochi, which is this glutinous rice substance. Oh, wow. Whoa, okay. Oh, 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 we can't do that. That was really heavy. He looked like he was really <laughs> like, yeah. So we're gonna bring on our culinary <laughs> expert and good friend, Rie. Hey, Rie, yeah. come on down. Welcome da, back. Da, 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 da. We're making mochi. Yay. What do you think? It's fun. Yeah? I used to do it when I was in elementary school. Oh, wow. I asked my mom to get a photo. Did she oh, have it? Mm, she's still looking. Oh. <laughs> I need that photo. <laughs> to be, yeah, that would be needed. Need it. I've never had mochi, so I'm very excited. Oh, wow. In addition to the special equipment, we also needed special rice, which we bought in advance because it needs to be soaked overnight. But what we also bought is some mochi to eat right now. Oh, the texture is amazing. Cheers. Mochi. You know, I have had this before. <laughs> <laughs> the outside green stuff is the mochi. And inside is red bean paste. Mm -hmm. And then it's covered in soybean flour. So the texture is very gelatinous, yeah. almost like very soft gummy bears. So this way of making mochi requires those special equipment mm -hmm. things. There is a machine that makes mochi, but oh. this is a traditional way. This organization called Kizuna, they actually have this equipment because they do mochi making classes. So they're gonna lend it to us. Off to the JACCC. So to make mochi, we are required to find some special equipment and you have that special equipment. Hi. Who are you and why do you have this? My name's Kent Madame and I work here at the Japanese American Culture and Community Center. So right now we're here in the James Irvine Japanese Garden in Little Tokyo and we're going to be borrowing Kizuna's Mochitsuki equipment. And Kizuna's mission is to educate, engage, and empower the next generation of Japanese and Japanese American youth. So in order to make mochi the traditional way, you're gonna need a few items. One, you're gonna need a steamer to steam the mochi gome rice. And you're going to put it in the usu. And then once it's in there, you're gonna take the kine and you're going to start breaking down the rice from its grain structure to basically a paste. I'm gonna take my left hand and make a fist on top. And we're gonna push down into the usu right. like this. How long does the pounding process typically take? Depends how much effort you put into it. <laughs> okay, yeah. so for your team, for example. Uh, we can we can get through one mochi in maybe 10, 15 minutes. Oh, really? Wow. wow. Yeah. Do you think we can do this? Yeah, you folks are gonna be great. Wow, we got the Kent seal of approval there. <laughs> do you know the number of people who die every year? I don't know. It's been reduced. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on, we gotta wait. <laughs> when eating the mochi, I would say be very careful and to chew it very well. People who eat mochi have a tendency to choke on it and some people even die. Eating it, not from even from making it. it. Yes. Well, Thank you for giving us the little lesson. Of course. I think it's time for us to give it a go. All right. Good luck. Should we just, awesome. We'll just we'll take we'll yeah. take this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Be careful. Thank you. We'll see ya. I'm just gonna... We look like Paul Bunyan. <laughs> did this wrong. All right. Okay. So to make mochi, you start with rice. And we had to get a particular kind of rice that is meant for mochi making, which is a mochi sweet rice. mochi rice. It's superior short grain sweet rice. And now we need to cook it. Kent recommended one cup rice to one and a quarter cups of water. I think we should do four. Yeah, four cups of rice is five cups of water. One, two, three. Check out my apron. I want that one. Oh my. Ta-da. Now I'm measuring the water to rice ratio. Beep. <laughs> no, it's not plugged in. 60 minutes! Yeah, I could just do double duty on here, right? Double duty. Three, three, for, Patrick. three for Andrew. Three for Patrick, three for Andrew. Okay, this is last one just... for Patrick. I win. Here we go. Oh, the light didn't come on. Is that plugged in? Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. Cook. Do we have a lid? Later. Oh, oh sure. it's wet, sorry. Oh, God. oh on, the, no. on the electronics? Oh, it's boy. fine, we're gonna be fine. One, one hour later. later. 
So here we are. We gotta clean it first. I'll scrub it. Look like a face. Yeah. You yeah, know, you put two eyes right there. I move. It's important that mochi stays hot while it's being made. So we're using warm water in hopes of warming up the usu all together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks great. This is incredible. All right, guys, good luck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Should we test the texture of it? That's yeah. a lot of water. Oh. I mean, it's pretty. Yeah, that looks like. That looks pretty gelatinous. Yeah. This is probably overcooked. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even we pound it, it doesn't. It's just gonna turn into mush. We can try it, but mm. my gut's telling me it might be overcooked. I don't know, guys. I'm kind of into it. Yeah, I hope this works. I mean, I've never seen this done. Uh, oh. Is it hot? Uh, hot. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> In true. Okay, I have all the rice now. Oh, here it comes. Blorp. Ooh! Squidge, squidge. The mallets will help keep it hot because we'll be dipping it in hot water. Yeah. And the first thing we're doing is squidging. Ooh. What's it feel like? Oh, it's so smushy. Say it's it like so. straight up oatmeal in this bucket. It right does now. sound. <laughs> what do you think of that audio? <laughs> so gross. It now looks like mashed potatoes. How's it look, Ray? Uh, bad. <laughs> it looks like two <laughs> wooden horses are like <laughs> trying to like Kiss oh, each yeah. other. I mean, it's it is sort changing. of, yeah. Do you want to get in here? Oh, oh your rhythm is good. <laughs> wow, these guys are wow. natural. Too. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this isn't going to get gelatinous and bouncy. I don't think this is going to get there. It's definitely pacing up, uh, but I get why we would want to just actually start it the right way from the start, so. Yeah. Do you remember the video? It was clean. Right. Like, it's not coming out like this. It needs to be stickier, mm -hmm. which yeah. means less water. Yeah, I mean, it tastes like uh, bland, dry rice porridge. Ah. So yesterday we had some overnight soaked rice that we put in a rice cooker, but we think that's wrong. We think you only soak if you're going to steam. Yeah. And what is the difference between cooking and steaming? The mechanism. The mechanism. So my work wife Hitomi's mom let us borrow steamer. Your work wife. Mother-in-law. Your work mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Look at how funny. legit that looks. We've decided that we're going to steam rice instead of using the rice cooker. I can do that job. Okay, go ahead. All right. Well, how far up am I going here? What are we? <laughs> I can do that job. Okay, how do I do this job? Bottom, it's a pot, so we fill with water and let it boil. We've got eight cups soaked. We're gonna do four cups per batch. I got mugs for coffee. Uh, Thank you. I came in at the wrong time. It's okay. And then we uh, spread this cheesecloth over the steamer. So you just have to poke the hole so the steam can escape. Mm. All right, let's uh, put okay. this puppy on. Let it steam for 30 to 40 minutes and we will see if it's fully cooked. Yes. Speaking of steam, yay. Who wants some? I feel pretty good about our steamer. We had this classic method, but we weren't pairing it with the classic method of steaming oh. it. We are trying to go too high tech mm. with that robot. Oh. That looks so much better than yesterday. That's what you want. All right, we're doing it. This looks the, good. Oh yeah. I know, it doesn't look like porridge. No, yeah, that looks like rice. This is, yeah, this is different. It's less sloshy, it's, it's smushing. Yeah, it's way more uh, encouraging. You wanna swap out, Andrew? Yeah, let us know when you wanna swap. Get in there. It's harder to press now, cause it's oh, yeah, less wet. Oh yeah, this is wet. harder than yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, that looks great. We're getting there. Yeah, it definitely looks pretty paste-like. Yeah. you imagine making this in an apartment with your neighbors downstairs? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, ball it up. Feels good. It's more satisfying than the squishing, right? Yeah, this is the best part. Adam's dying to oh, yeah, pound the mochi. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Adam's doing the pounding that I like. Yeah. Oh, that pulls pretty nicely. Yeah, it's a mochi. Mm -hmm. That's mochi. Yeah. The last round of pounding is with like one person with their hands in there flipping it and slapping it while one person pounds. We're gonna do that very carefully. Am I doing right? You're doing great. Okay. Ugh. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Slap it down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Oh, that was good. That was that satisfying. Okay. Patrick, can I get to do that? No. You guys are too dangerous for that. <laughs> we beat the out of it, now we're gonna cover it with some warm towels. To keep it hot. So we're gonna shape the mochi, and this is mochiko, the rice flour. It's so little. <laughs> mm. Not really. When you're shaping, make sure you're, uh, you cover it with your hand with flour because it's 
really sticky. This was actually my first job when I was 14. <gasps> really? Shape, really? You're a mochi shaper? Mochi. That's so cute. <laughs> How long did you do that for? Uh, just for New Year's. It feels really good. Yeah. I'm definitely thinking about like choking and dying now. This is pretty like a large. Yeah, I've been thinking about that all night. Flower hits the board and you stick to your hands that mochi. If anyone wants. Oh. <laughs> oh, you got a oh, cute little. Good. Yeah, you did good. Not bad. So I think we can eat it right now if you want to. Yeah. I want to eat it yeah. fresh. Ah, oh, mochi. Whoa. Yeah! We made mochi. Yeah, we did that. Looking at the video, we have not made it green or filled it with anything, which should be our next stage of the challenge. I don't think we can get this exact ingredient that makes it green from the video. The green is coming from yomogi. It's a Japanese herb. I've never seen that in LA. So maybe we can go to a grocery store, find something close to yomogi. First, we're going to sample it with soy sauce, though. It's popular way to eat mochi is with soy sauce sauce and sugar, a little bit of sugar, yeah. and seaweed. That looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, getting right in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's really satisfying. As a person who only ever had ice cream mochi, yeah. this flavor is a revelation. Back from the grocery store. Sweet beans. Roasted soybean powder. Matcha instead of yomogi. Is this gonna make the kine green? We should be all right. We just have to be careful. We're about ready to make the next batch of mochi. All right. First things first, we got steamed rice. Woo! Bravo, bravo. Mamma me. Let's poke holes. Oh my Beep. god. <laughs> Beep. Stop. <laughs> I think we just steam it the same way. Okay, now we're gonna get the beans ready to go. Can I tell you that this is one of my favorite things to do? Open cans? Yeah. That's weird. All right, so we're going to mash up some of these beans. To be more of a paste. Can I ask a question about this bowl? Is it used for any specific thing? Yeah, we use it for grind sesame. It's, so it's a sesame-based bowl. But you can use it for something else, too. Like, like a Japanese this. mortar and pestle. Yes. Can you guys take that over there? Rie, yeah. come here. Get it. I want, that was my part. Oh. Uh, no, you open go, the can go. and scoop them out. Doing our mochi dance, doing our mochi stance. Who are our first smushers? You wanna be the first smushers? Yeah. So we gotta put it in and fold it. Through this journey, I've felt a real kine ship with you guys. Oh, thanks. Oh. Wow. Yeah, baby. That is the appropriate amount. I think we could pound it for like 10% more, get a nice smoother consistency. It almost look like a solidified. Yeah, that looks way greener. Oh, see, this is synchronicity. This is what Sting was talking about. <laughs> it's yes, pretty, that looks great. It's pretty slimy looking. Oh, hell yeah, Rie. You know, it really is starting to look a lot like the video. Count them. <laughs> one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Yeah. yeah, get in there, Pat. You got it, pal. Ha! Ha! You know, making the sounds really helps. It does. I think it's ready. All right, we're moving on to the next phase of Slap and pound. Hi! Hi! Ha! I'm so nervous! <laughs> I just had to go on this one. Ha! Yay! Ha! Yay. <laughs> All right, Adam, give us the final slap. Oh. <laughs> Slam it down. Yeah! Okay, flower. Strike a pose. Ah! <laughs> Who put that there? Oh, oh my god! So you are going to take a um, good portion? All right, I'm going in the sweet bean. Ooh, yeah, that's bad. This one's a fail. That's a no-go. You guys are doing a good job. I know. Yeah, good what job. are you doing? So that's Andrew and Patrick. <laughs> and then Nikki and Ray. Oh, bingo bongo, I got it. Bingo bongo? It's just my chance of success. We made mochi. We really did. We have a green mochi. It is flavored with matcha, filled with red bean paste, mm -hmm. and covered in a soybean powder. The signs of learning as well. Cheers. Cheers. The red bean really works so well. And the roasted soybean powder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The texture wise, it's better than the first try. Mm -hmm. A lot smoother. After we switched to the steamer, all of the methods that we did were as it would have been done way back in history. If you get an opportunity to do this with the kine and the osu and a bunch of people, do it. It's awesome. I think we should invite a bunch of our friends to eat these now. One, two, three! Wow. <laughs> I love it. Yeah? Hey. Good job.
It's a good texture, yeah? This whole process was made possible because of Kent and Kazuna and the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center. So big thanks to them. And Hitomi's mom and Hitomi. Okay, so here we are, Eating Your Feed, where I've been challenged by Adam, the person behind the camera, to make hand-pulled noodles, something I've never made before. In the off-season, I said, hey Adam, wouldn't it be cool to make these noodles? Completely forgot about it, then he brought it back on me, and I was like, that looks so hard, I regret ever saying hand-pulled noodles. We're going to do this one made by this guy, Peter Song, from Kung Fu Kitchen in New York City. It's kind of like spinning together, like if you ever had, were on a swing set as a kid and like wrapped it up, and then you sit on it and spin around a lot until you get close to throwing up. Like once it's been kneaded, he's just like, watch out. The noodle is pulled and then doubled over and pulled again until he has noodle-sized noodles. This is like the closest that cooking gets to magic for me. It's a very simple dough. It looks like flour, water. He's using a bread flour with a higher gluten content. I think that's gonna be important. To talk through my game plan, I have Chef Extraordinaire Rie. Is that a good setup, Adam? Hey, Rie. Hey. Rie is a tasty producer, always helps us when we're messing up with stuff. So today I'm doing the hand-pulled noodles. What do you think about that? <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. You don't need to must it, right? You, That's true, too. You just have to make it happen. I just need some noodles in a bowl by the end of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let you know if I need any help. Bye. Bye. Okay, so I did some measuring and I've got 900 grams of flour, AKA approximately two pounds. I measured it that way, but then Adam made me convert. Science. 20 grams of salt, 450 grams of water. We begin now. ASMR. I'm gonna make a well, This reminds me of my cat because his name is Wellington. He's currently trying his hardest not to lick his... This doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough water, to be honest. I mean, I guess when you think about it, the flower is like, well, it's just white dust, but it started out as hundreds of acres of plants and <laughs> I feel like I need more water. I feel like you should need a little water. I know what you're feeling right now, which is when you see someone struggling with something, it's like watching somebody open a jar. That's what this whole show is. I think it's time to let this rest. So this dough already feels a lot smoother. Do I need some flour on this surface? <laughs> Do I need flour on this surface? Oh God, I shouldn't have added that flour. Everything I'm reading says that if you're having a hard time with the elasticity of the dough, it just needs to rest longer. You don't really see it in the reference video. When they do the cut and it comes back with this shiny log of dough, it's because of the oil. Okay, I think I'm gonna try the old snake test on this thing. <laughs> what am I doing? I think the slapping is because the dough is, it, it just wants to return to its original shape. Oh. I broke it. Instead of giving up on this dough, I think I'm just going to add water to it. Why did you let me do this? This is a bad idea. Stretch it again. Adam, screw you. <laughs> so mistakes were made. We found a very useful Cook's Illustrated article, and it turns out I did pretty much every ratio incorrectly. It also seems to be that working with exclusively bread flour, you'll get the best result, but it will be harder to work with. So I feel good. This is like the stuff I should have done before the first time. So we have 900 grams flour, seven grams salt, 540 grams of water, forming a little well. That one I did good. Come back here, water. Okay, water, what are you doing? Why are you thinking when you're kneading? I think, am I doing this right? <laughs> I feel like maybe you should wash your hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like your hands are like crust or, crust or? Crust? Crusty. Crusty. <laughs> oh yeah, you're so much better at this. It looks very smooth now. I think it was, we needed more water. Okay, I think it's time to let that rest. So I'm gonna put that in there. So we've made four batches of dough with different combinations of flour, salt. After it's had a really long time to rest, it should be really good to go. Tomorrow, it's business time. So yesterday we prepared four batches of dough. We're gonna go with the first one I made. It's quite cold. I hope that doesn't screw me over. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's not, uh, <laughs> this feels like, 
ABC gum guys. You know that one? Already been chewed. I'm getting a couple nods from around the room. <laughs> it looks like a little slug. I think I need to let it rest. Hello, Rie. Hi, got you coffee for everyone. This was actually completely un... Are you just leaving? No, I'm <laughs> closing the door. <laughs> Do you like it? It's really good. Yeah. Okay, we've let this dough log rest. I'm gonna gently stretch this out. All right, I'm gonna double it over and see how, how this goes. Oh, it's gotten so tight. I, I can't make a noodle from this. It just wants to break. It reaches a tearing point pretty easily. So this one's exactly the same as the last one, but with a different salt. You do that much stretching and then it's like, we're really just burning through our deck here though. AP and bread flour mixture. It's now genuinely at room temp and look at this. It looks pretty good. <laughs> Let me portion off a little bit and see how far I can get with this. Come over here and try this. This is dough good. Dough fight! Oh. <laughs> oh, you're out. It's the new thing. You know how chokers came back into style? This is a doker. This feels like Britney Spears. What was the video? Toxic? Yep, no. It just doesn't have the elasticity that I think is required for this kind of noodle. We are in California, one of the driest periods we've ever had here. All of our recipes suggest that if it's drier, you're gonna need more water. How much more water? I don't know. I'm gonna do 400 grams of water. We just gotta get to a point where we're making noodles. <laughs> Guys, I thought my kneading days were behind me. At what point do I determine that this is entirely too wet? Can I just pull this into noodles right now? I think I need to add a little bit more flour to this. Come on, a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I need more flour. I call bull on everybody's recipe that ever published a thing about noodles. He was trying to keep the noodles for themselves. I get it, I would do it too. I'm gonna burn this tape when I successfully make noodles. Okay. Having seen how these videos get made, I wanna say cue the heroic music now. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna cut off a little section like this, okay? And then I'm going to fold this back up. Oh, f No! I worked so hard kneading that dough. Oh, I reached the tearing point. Okay, let's try another recipe. Okay, we found this recipe utilizing a stand mixer from this guy, Chef Thomas Johnson. Let's just follow his recipe exactly. See if it works. Cake flour, all purpose flour, of salt, of baking soda. Woo! Okay. Oil, water. Let's whack it up. Going to speed four. <laughs> this is brown. Is that whole wheat? Yeah. Yeah, that's completely the wrong kind of flour. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I added more water to this, it would work. <laughs> that was entirely too much water. <laughs> so this was a failed attempt. Yeah, um, that's a wrap on day two. This is gonna require some further research. So far for this video, we've been referencing recipes that utilize high gluten flour to achieve a very pulley dough. I found this guy's website, Luke Rymars. There's like nothing on it but this recipe. But he said use low gluten flour and an alkaline solution to help make a suitably stretchy dough. So I have approximately 150 grams of cake flour going into 25 grams of all-purpose flour, two grams of salt, and one gram of baking soda. Stay out of all that water. Huh? Oh, this is the wrong, sorry. And 110 grams of water. Turn it into a squishy paste, or as we in the industry like to call it, dough. Add the oil at this point, sure, why not? It's quite wet and sticky, very nearly too sticky to work with. The dough should no longer bounce back. But you can see like when I put my fingers into it, it kind of holds its shape, which is what I ultimately want it to do. But I'm gonna give it a quick little pull test. You ready for this? It's still pretty brittle right here, but it definitely feels way different than any previous batch. Ooh, the dough is getting good. 
Oi, oi, oi. Oh, Rie, welcome. How's it going? I've seen better days. I'm using cake flour for the first time. Yeah? And I needed this for like maybe 40 minutes. 40 minutes? By hand? Yeah. Wow. I just don't have a delicate enough touch to do it yet. I need to practice. Oh, raise like delicate touch. Boom, boom. <laughs> so you think cake flour is the answer? This dough feels much nicer to work with than any dough we've had previously. I feel like you should have kneaded a little longer. That's a f noodle, Rie. <laughs> Just leave that there, okay. and then let's work on some other noodles. <laughs> so much rage. I don't know. Oh, hell yeah, baby! Ah. <laughs> Adam, you broke Andrew. <laughs> right? There's one noodle. Okay, that's not a big deal. Okay, I have one super fat one here. This isn't working. Okay, I give up on that. Okay, so that's... Pretty much the end of day three. And I think I'm at the part where I need to really figure out how to pull them evenly. So tomorrow, same dough recipe, working on the pulling. Hopefully we'll have a bowl of noodles by the end of the day. So I needed it for about 40 to 50 minutes. And now when I touch it, it don't bounce back. Okay, ready? Here we go. That's one thick noodle. Here's two thinner noodles. I mean, that's like more or less without those breaks. That's basically it, that's noodles. That's noodles. Okay, there's a little bit of noodles right there. If I were good at this, you would just be able to make a portion of noodles out of one pull, but I cannot do it evenly enough. I think it would take years of practice to get that good. So instead, I'm just making like four noodles at a time. We're ready to do the final plating of these noodles. I've got some salted water boiling. My noodles are slumbering under here. I've got herbs to garnish the bowl with. Hello, Rie. How did it go? Not great, but at least the dough worked. I have some noodles here. Noodle. But I did that with my hands, yeah. you know? Not a machine. Noodles are cooking. Beef broth. Did you season at all? This is handmade, Rie. Don't worry about the broth. If you'd like to see a broth video, leave a comment. I'm straining my noodles. Look at that. That's a ton of noodles I just made. Ooh, hide this thick one. I'm not hiding my shame. Thick noodle goes back in. Watch out, Rie, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. Hot. I run a tight ship over here in Andrew's noodle world. Yeah, that's looking good. Cilantro, more cilantro. Onions, some of these are quite thick. And how about for a splash of color? Boom, a little chili oil. That's good. That's a bowl of noodles. You did it. Sort of. You can see they're very uneven. That's easily the hardest part. It's magic what they do. Are you happy? Yes, because it's over. Yeah. Really? It's very rigid. Adam, you want to try some? That's good. Cake. That's really tasty. Oh yeah. My God. Yeah. Chili yeah. oil. This was the longest episode. Yet right? so little was accomplished. But you now high respect. Oh yeah. For the master. Very much so. Yeah. This has been eating the hand pulled noodles out of my feed. Oh yes. Okay, so here we are. Eating Your Feed, the show where people like me get challenged to try and recreate viral food recipes. My friend Adam is challenging me today to make Japanese fluffy pancakes. Not a lot of steps, but it's going to require some skill. It's the perfect level for my level of cooking, which is amateur at best, but I'm optimistic. Hand mixer on the egg whites, getting it to the nice stiff fluff there. Okay, so now they're adding the pancake mix into the three and a half inch molds. So they put the lid on, it rises 10 minutes. Now, the flip is going to be very difficult. That is pancake perfection right there. I love pancakes, straight up. <laughs> so to help me today is our food expert, Rie. Hi. Thank you for coming. What are you making today? Fluffy Japanese pancakes. Okay. Yeah, have you eaten Japanese pancake before? No, so. <laughs> <laughs> so egg whites is the most important part of this fluffy pancake. If gotcha. you over mix it, it become very crumbly. It's not that difficult. I don't want to scare you or anything. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, in here, we have our molds. Can you imagine? I mean, are we like living in Looney Tune land where pancakes are this tall and fluffy? So right now we're going to take 
two egg yolks, quarter cup of sugar. Do people in other countries get stressed out when they watch us cooking just because they wish we were saying it in the metric system? It's about time we switch, huh? Half cup of milk. Every last drop. Three quarter cup of pancake mix. That looks like three quarters. What do you think, guys, at home? It's going in. Think. All right, whisking together. We have that. Now we're going to add our four egg whites. Here's two. Okay, that's three. All right, four. Let's plug in our hand mixer. Okay, we're in. No, that is a great question, Adam. I have never hand mixed. Just not gonna overthink it, just gonna go for it. <laughs> so that's what that button does. Okay, things are in. Oh, so maybe it just needs to be unlocked. Nope. Okay, we know what that button does. In, in. Hmm, do I just gotta beat it by hand? I mean, that's impossible, right? I don't wanna do that at all. Okay, new mixer. Okay, what the F? I, I think we just have a bad power source. All right, so we have a bad plug. Let's go. <laughs> the noise! We're going all the way at six, by the way. The volume is increasing. I'd say we're triple, maybe quadruple the original volume. Close. Ooh, no, nah, it's staying. It's staying. The peak is staying. Okay, let's see the tasty video. Let's see how peaked up that got. No, yeah, this is it. Uh, I think I might have overdone it. We're gonna get in there, but just slightly. We want these to mix together, but we don't want to lose the uh, the whip. <sighs> I think it's too crumbly. Maybe not though. It's not that far off. Let's go for it. Let's get our heat going. We're gonna put this on the lowest heat. Okay, there's one. All right, both are in. We've greased up our molds. Go, three quarters of the way in. Okay, let's cover it. Okay, pulling it off, try and separate. Jesus, disaster. Sorry, folks. Yeah, okay, well, this is a failure. This is a miserable failure. My God, what is happening here, Patrick? I don't think the flame was high enough. Although it rose, so what the hell does that mean? I don't know. It smells fantastic, though. So first attempt, didn't work, what did we learn? Flame will be a little bit higher, and uh, maybe try them one at a time. I don't know. <laughs> Second attempt, we're gonna use what was left in the batter. Put the lid on. I was using a fish spatula last time because that's what they used in the video, but now I'm gonna use this one because I can probably hook it in a lot better. Bubbling up at the top, looking very similar to what we were doing before making all types of cracking noises. Stop doing that. If, if I was someone else, if I was Rie, you'd be doing what you need to do. But for me, two minutes, we're getting high. Look how high that is. I've never cooked a pancake on one side for 10 minutes. All right, it smells delicious. Motherfucker! no, no. Oh man, well, we burnt the bottom of that one. We knew that. So we need to adjust the heat. We gotta figure out a better way to flip it though. These tongs aren't it. These, these can't do it. I greased up the inside. Do I need to grease it way more? Oh yeah, that pancakey clog your windpipe. This is fluffy. They weren't lying. It is everything you wanted on the inside. Definitely more eggy, but it, try it. It's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. With syrup, butter, the whole thing. Uh-oh. How is it going? What is the best way to flip it? I think this is not the good one. Not the good Let one? Let me get the good one. Okay, bad tongs. These aren't tasty tongs. That was the problem. You know, I'm ready to sell out so hard, but no one will give me a shot at selling out. Where do you sell out? I would sell out for a surprisingly low amount. 2019, I'm gonna be a micro-influencer. What did I miss? What were you guys uh, talking about? I wanna sell out. Okay. Because <laughs> I was saying how these aren't any good. Uh huh. And I would love to do an advertisement for a really good brand. Oh, like Tasty? Yes. Only at Walmart. <laughs> you see how good she is at that? <laughs> I want to do that. Oh my good God, that was yeah. so easy. Oh, you can feel the silicon. Does it sound like an infomercial? Classic. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> All right, well, that answers that. I'm gonna mix them up. Yeah, that's stiff. Let's go. Okay, that looks decent. Let's grease the molds. Okay, that looks about three quarters. Cover it up. 
10 minutes. Eight minutes. We're seeing some bubbling on top. How do you normally top your pancakes? A little powdered sugar is fantastic. Five minutes. Oh, my spatula. Ooh, boy, it's hitting the top. All right, two away. Off. Oh, shit, guys. All right. <laughs> Everyone relax. Okay, get it low. Get it low. God, I hate the way this is shaking. I hate the way this is shaking! Damn. That looks good. That brown? Rie was right about the temperature. It overflowed like crazy. My goodness. All right, put this back on. You can't get ahead of yourself with cooking fat. I mean, how many times do we have to talk about this? Well, the tongs worked, so that's good. One minute. Oh my God. Remember when square plates were the thing? It'd be embarrassing to have that in your home now. Yeah. Oh my God. What do we think? I mean, it's brown. It's not light brown, but it's brown. Oh. oh. <sighs> All right, so the presentation of this plate, not great. So now that I've gotten this far, I'm going to try and make two at the same time and see if I can stack them up and then I'll have some friends over to try it out. So last attempt, we're gonna try and make two, and instead of using vegetable oil to grease up the molds, we're going to use spray canola oil. Hopefully that'll make it slide out a little bit better. Okay, two. Got our batter here. Okay, just a little bit more. 10 minutes. Four minutes. Yeah, it's rising. Two minutes. Matter of seconds. Oh man, look how much they've risen. 249, flipping. Come on, man, you could do it. You could do it, bro. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Why not me? One, two, 23 skidoo. Here we go. Oh my God, a laptop just fell. Going, Everything's crazy right now. We're flipping anyways, baby. Oh, frick, I ruined it. Oh God, why? God, no. All right, screw it. This is the last one. All right, here we go. Mother Who cares? Honestly, who cares? Whatever, put it back on. I'll cut around it. This sucks. This really sucks. <laughs> Cooking's fun, right guys? Yeah. That first one that you messed up has already ri risen back a little, so I think you might be good still. Adam is trying to cheer me up behind the camera. Maybe these are salvageable, who knows? We'll see how my mood is in four minutes. So let's check back in then. All right, let's take them out. They look way better. You know, my kids are getting these and they're liking them. That's how this goes in my house. You wanna cry about it? Well, guess who's not eating fluffy Japanese pancakes? I'm gonna try and cut these out using a method that Adam came up with. By pushing down, hopefully that eliminates everything there and I can just flick it up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh my God, Adam. You little whiz kid, you freaking figured it out. Oh, okay, there's one. Whoa! And all the sins are forgiven of that terrible flip. Two. All right. Oh my God, guys. Breakfast is served. Wow. Comment below what you think, because to me, not bad. Let's cut the uh, butter. Now that's just the bun. Oh no, we'll flip it over. Yep, we'll flip it over. Hell yeah, dude. We'll flip it over. Here it is, guys. Yes! Wow. That's that's jiggly. Uh, jiggly. Yeah, man. That's... Slap it. I'm not gonna slap it. You slap it. Oh wow. Nice bow. Sturdy. It, yeah. yeah. How many times did you try? This is the fourth time? Oh wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh what? yeah. That's good. Oh yeah, right there. I like no. all the butter. No. Wow, look like a kink. It Whoa, does. Whoa, just jumping in. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Has anyone had a restaurant version of this before? Me. How does this compare? I think, it, yeah, you nailed it. Great, wow. Patrick. Thank you. Look at you, are you gonna whip this out on like the weekends now? I know. Yeah, I'm into it. I'd say the flip was the most challenging part. I'm sure there's like an algorithm to figuring out the right speed versus velocity oh, yeah, of yeah, rotation, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Give me 10,000 hours, check back in. We'll see where I'm at. Well, I'm proud of myself. Hey. This has been another episode of Eating Your Feed. I'm proud of you too. Hey, thanks That's everybody. That's great. Thanks. Yeah.
Okay, so here we are, eating your feed. My name is Nikki. Today, my friend Andrew has challenged me to recreate a very expensive beef sandwich that he tried while he was in Japan shooting worth it. Everyone in this room has had the sandwich except for me. Here's the video. This is at a restaurant in Tokyo called Wagyu Mafia Cutlet Sandwich. So Andrew tried the Kobe beef Chateaubriand sandwich and wow, that piece of meat is luxurious. It's spotted like a leopard with fat. Dredge it in an egg wash and panko. You just deep fry it like fried chicken. And they have these beautiful pieces of fluffy white bread. Oh, this is my kind of sandwich. He cuts the crusts off. <laughs> 20,000 yen. Yowie. Is Kobe beef the same as Wagyu beef? I Googled Kobe beef and the thing that is up for sale is Wagyu beef. Wagyu beef is any of the four Japanese breeds of cattle. There's also one called Sanda beef. I thought it said Sandra beef, and I really like the idea of there being a beef called Sandra. It's Sanda. I'll buy a piece of beef and call it Sandra. You should also buy some less expensive meat and practice yeah. with that first. I Maybe guess. some test beef. Yeah. So, as always, to help, our very good friend and chef extraordinaire Rie is here. How are you? Good. I'm making a Japanese sandwich today. Yeah, I remember this place. Is it good? That's good. So Wagyu means Japanese beef. Mm -hmm. And then this was a Kobe Chateaubriand. Is that a cut of beef? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Am I going to be able to find that here? You may be able to. Because I've seen it in a restaurant saying like Kobe beef. Mm. And then, is that just like a regular katsu sauce? We can buy a um, sauce called tonkatsu sauce. Yes, and then there's bread. I would like to eat Japanese bread. We're just taking people's orders now. <laughs> it has a little bit lighter texture. Like fluffier? Yeah, fluffier. So the inside is not cooked all the way through. Higher temperature. And shorter cook time. Exactly. Mm. Good luck. Thanks, bye. bye. So we need to get cheap beef, fancy beef, tonkatsu sauce, breadcrumbs, white bread, preferably Japanese white bread. I think I can do this and I think it's gonna be a really delicious day. We got the beef. It's not that much. <laughs> the guy who sold it to us said that this is a superior piece of meat, second only to Japanese wagyu. All right, okay. we got stuff. Hey. We got two square loaves, cheap beef, expensive beef. We have our katsu sauce, and we've got some panko in here. We also have some treats. Okay, so we got this bread from a Korean supermarket in Koreatown, but they also had a bakery. So we got some hot dog buns. I got this pink baguette. Mmm. <laughs> you want to eat this pink thing with me? Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> Pretty weird. Looks like you're eating Patrick Starr's hand. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. I guess we get cooking. So this process requires deep frying things, which naturally makes me a little bit nervous, but I've got my pot of oil and we want that to, oh, I don't know anything about temperature or time. Did we say anything? She said high temperature, but for a short amount of time. Well, I mean, it has to get hot. You got my thermometer. Um, it's not lighting. Ah, oh my God. Okay, well, safety first. That's heating up. So from what I can tell, the beef is not like seasoned in any way. Ingredients wise is pretty basic. So the fancy Wagyu that we got today is not Kobe Wagyu, but it's Australian Wagyu from Blackmore Farm. And it is from a Chateaubriand cut. It is about an inch and a half thick and it's $40. And I think this is like the smallest, most expensive piece of beef I've ever cooked. We're not gonna start with that because if I mess it up, we only have one. So we bought some backup beef, black Angus tenderloins, but they seem to be the right size. This is the black Angus that is like $7 per tenderloin. And this is the Chateaubriand Wagyu, which is 40 something dollars. This one definitely has better marbling, but like still not quite like in the video in Japan, but it was the best we could do. <laughs> All right, it goes flour and then eggs. I only got two eggs, but I think that should be fine. Should I put salt in the flour? I don't remember if they salted it. I would definitely salt the outside after it's done frying. Will anything stick? If it comes fresh out of the oil, and yeah. I just... That's like the time to salt fried things. All right. Oh, that's a lot of panko. And also in the video, they cook with chopsticks. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm about to deliver a beef baby. Okay, the thermometer says deep fry is near 375, which sounds about right. Here's our tenderloin. Um, <laughs> one whole payment just fell into three pieces. I guess what did you give her paying $15 for two tenderloins? I had Wagyu beef for the first time this summer at a fancy Japanese restaurant. 
and I cried. All right, well, I'm gonna dip this in egg. Penko Mountain. Yeah, this feels like a well-covered piece of beef. Should I do this little buddy? It looks like an apostrophe. That can be my test test piece. Seeing Nikki's face above the pot is very funny from over here. All right, we're there. We're going in. And starting a timer. This is fun, just sitting over here watching. You're back seat cooking. I'm front seat cooking. Okay, that's one minute. It's so brown and crispy. All right, 1.30. Salt? Oh. It's definitely rare. Might be a little too rare. It's hard to tell though, because this size of this guy was also really small. Let's try the big one, see what we can do. Maybe we can make a sandwich out of that one. I remember their beef taking kind of a while to fry. Really? Maybe it's a lower temp and a longer fry. That's two minutes and 30 seconds. All right, let's test it with like the end piece of this guy. Wow, such puffy bread. Toasting the bread. <gasps> Sauce on both pieces of bread or just one? Maybe a light coating on both? Mmm, sauce. And I think they cut the crust off after the sandwich is assembled. Mm. Nice. And now I cut it into quarters. Looks great. Looks pretty good. Pretty close, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's give it a go. Oh, good. Oh. Tender. There's not a ton of beef flavor. It's mostly just like soft texture with crunchy texture. I think you can go a little less too. Less fry? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is this a little overdone? I would apply maybe one minute and a half. Because like when you okay. take out the meat, it's still It'll cooking. It's still cooked, yeah. okay. So I'll try it again with my second piece of cheap meat, figure out a better cook time. I'm hoping this will just stay together when I fry it. We're gonna take it down to a minute and a half, hopefully get a little bit more of a rare inside and assemble another sandwich. I'm cutting the bread at an angle here because not a lot about me is very straight. So hopefully I can do a straighter job. Well, that's not a bad slice. Okay, minute 30. Oh, the piece didn't come off. Salt. Oh. Layer of sauce. At the Wagyu Sando place, if there's a little bit of meat that makes it not a square, they'll they cut, cut it a off. little bit so that it'll be more square-like. That looks a lot better. I think this cook time was closer to what we should be doing. Okay, I think this is good. You can see the toasty bread, the sauce, the katsu outing, and my friend Sean's here. Hi, Sean, come on Hello. in. I made a cheap Ooh beef katsu sando. But you were just in Japan. I was just in Japan. And you are Japanese. And, yep. So you are familiar Both. with the concept of the katsu sando. Yes. Please enjoy. Pretty good. Yeah? I regret the beef is like not super cooked, which is good. When we ate the expensive one, you just pull the meat away from the sandwich. Then you have to cut it with your teeth. Right, because that has to do with fat content. Mm -hmm. The fattier it is, the more it like breaks apart more easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there are no more cheap steaks to futz with. It's finally time to face my fears of this very expensive piece of beef. I think I'm gonna slice my bread slices and have them ready to go. In the toaster. It's beef time. To up the stakes, if you will, Andrew and Rie are gonna be here while I make it. Come on in. My palms are sweating. You're sweating, I'm sweating. Here she is, Sandra. Oh. She's beautiful. Look how perfectly round she is. Should I dab? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chateau <I'm> Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please do not. I was talking about dabbing the meat, and Adam thought I was gonna like dab dab, like a 12 year old boy. It's got very nice marbling. Yeah, it's soft, it's very tender. Can I do an idiot sandwich to you? What's an idiot sandwich? <laughs> you have never seen it? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot sandwich. What is happening behind me right now? Okay, here she goes. Bye, Sandra. You need a timer? Yes! Bread's toasting. I'm very nervous. It's been a minute 30. She's, She's so, so big. big up wow! In. It's a nice color. Ooh. Oh, that Whoa. piece got funky. Oh. That's okay, you'll cut that off. You're like a coach. <laughs> It's time for Sandra. God, she's big. Oh, wow, that's thick. The mom and dad behind me. You can do it. Okay, ready? Drum roll. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's basically just toasted meat, right? <laughs> this is really, really ridiculous. The bread is so thin. <laughs> this is. <I> <laughs> yeah. Okay, last time I ate Wagyu beef, I cried. I really don't know what's gonna happen here. Oh, the juices are running. That's so decadent. Well, they taste like a first? marshmallow. Like a beef mallow. 
Mmm. Mmm. This one has a beefiness that the other two didn't have. I feel like the fat has a flavor of its own in this one that it wasn't does. present in the others. This one, the beef is the star. I feel like in the other pieces, we were talking about the bread and sauce a lot yeah. more. Mm -hmm. This one, like the beef just really, really stands out. Yeah, that's crazy. That's good, Nikki. Thank you, Annie. Yeah. I heard you were excited to try some beef. I was until I found out it was rare. You're not into rare beef? No, but I'll, I'll try anything. No, it tastes good. You thought like we all ate it and it was just bad? <laughs> no, I, I didn't expect it. I hate rare food, but it's really, really good. Yeah, that's you pretty good. You changed someone's life today. Yeah. <laughs> we had a very expensive piece of Wagyu Chateaubriand that was dredged in flour, eggs, and panko, and then deep fried until it was rare. And then we had some soft, fluffy Japanese white bread covered in a katsu sauce with the meat placed on it cut into quarters. I can't even imagine what that restaurant is doing with like high tier Japanese Kobe Wagyu beef. But I think like with whatever piece of beef you can find, if you want to do this at home, you totally can. I'd say definitely spring for the good Asian bread, get a good sauce, you make a delicious sandwich. Woo! I just smell like beef. Oh yes!